Traditional martial arts are full of all kinds of hand strikes, ranging from the orthodox to the farcical. Most of which you can throw out the minute we start talking about real fighting instead of just kata. Until now. Because today, I've selected five of the most effective kung fu, jitsu, karate, keto hand strikes that actually work in a real fight, and if we're being totally honest, might actually work better than traditional punching. First, let's get something out of the way. If we're talking about pure boxing, these strikes aren't actually legal, insofar as you're only supposed to be striking with the front part of your knuckles. That being said, if we're talking about MMA or self-defense, or you just have a very cool ref, then the sky's the limit. I also want to explain why I'm trying to reinvent the wheel. For those of you that aren't already subscribed to the channel, which, why aren't you, the button is right there, or over there, I'm not totally sure, you'll know that I poo-poo the heel palm strike. But that has less to do with the strike and more to do with the fact that people don't actually bother to learn how to punch properly out of risk of breaking their hand and instead say this is all you need. But at the same time, even I have to admit, sometimes closed fist striking won't get the job done either. Punching is a hammer, but not everything is a nail. Whether you're actually concerned you're gonna break your knuckles or you don't have the right range or you just wanna see different ways to hit somebody, these five strikes could actually get the job done for you. Starting out, let's talk about the Koken Uchi or the top of wrist strike. Now traditionally, this strike is taught as a way to block a punch and return with the strike, but I also recommend looking at it as a punch all on its own. As the name implies, you're gonna be striking with the top of your wrist. If I don't line up my wrist properly when I punch, I can easily bend it, scrape it, or otherwise hurt myself while throwing the punch. So I say we bypass that problem altogether and strike with the wrist already bent. So now I can throw a hook just like I would in boxing, but instead of worrying about hurting my hand, I keep the wrist bent, turn the hand out, and strike with a much larger wrist bone. In general, the wrist bone is a lot more structurally sound than your knuckles are, so you have a lot less risk of injury if you hit with the right part. But if you do practice throwing like this, it's a very effective way to still throw power punches, but without the risk of hurting your hands. The other thing I like about this strike is that it's very effective in the clinch range. Because if I'm here, tied up with Bob, and I release my hand to come in and drive this punch, it might land, but the movement from here to here is a big one. But if I let the hand pull and come out here, I can strike with the back of the wrist here and then immediately re-grab or come back into another tie, so on and so forth. Moving on, let's talk about the Boshiken or the ridge hand if you prefer. Technically speaking, these are two different strikes, but for the purposes of this video, they're gonna be used most the same way with a small difference in between. We'll get to that in a second. Now the ridge hand you can think of as kind of a reverse karate chop. Instead of going outward like uh, we're going inward like uh, with the goal being to strike with the inner part of the hand or the forearm. Something to understand, on a fundamental level, punching has a lot less to do with what you're doing with your hands and a lot more with what you're doing with your legs. If you properly drive from the legs, ass, and back, you'll create a lot of power, allowing you to throw full power into your opponent. At which point, it doesn't matter if you throw a straight punch, if you throw a hook, or if you throw a ridge hand. The hand is what delivers the strike, but your legs are what throw it. Now yes, technically with the Boshiken, we're trying to hit with the thumb knuckle and not with a totally closed or extended fist, but I tend to not advocate that. Never mind the fact that this feels awkward to do, this is also a very delicate, very precise way to have to strike somebody. Strike something soft, like the temple or coming up under the jaw, and it'll probably hurt them a lot. Strike something hard, like the top of the skull or even into the teeth, and you're just as likely to break your own thumb as you are something on them. Your overhand is a very versatile strike. Outside of it being one of the more powerful punches you can throw, you can also throw it with the palm in towards you, beer mug style. You can turn the wrist out, focusing on the lead knuckle, or, now thanks to me, you can land with the inside of your hand or forearm and still create just as much force. Let's talk now about the hiraken, or the leopard's paw, or the panther strike. Whatever you wanna call it, we're gonna be hitting with the second knuckles on our hand rather than what we traditionally strike with. The benefit of doing it this way is that we go from this range to this range, which isn't a lot, but sometimes an inch is all you need, and it reduces the surface area of the strike, which theoretically makes it hurt more. With this strike, you can reliably hit somebody in the temple, into the jaw, into the throat, solar plexus, or drive it into the gut. Even though we're technically only talking about bare knuckle striking today, 
The second knuckle style of punching translates very well to kickboxing. This is the size of my hand with my boxing gloves on, but this is the size of my hand when I make that hiraken. So now, instead of being here and missing my opponent, I can extend my hand and hit my opponent. So if I keep my hands open but tense like this, I can hit from farther away than my opponent expects me to. And because I've got thick padded gloves on, I don't have to worry about being quite so precise. Do I recommend always punching like this? No, but it is a good way to mix up how you're gonna hit your opponent. Also, keeping your hand open in a boxing glove is an important concept that we'll talk about later on in the video. Stick around. Moving away from kickboxing and coming back to grappling, let's say we're doing something like kudo or sambo or anything where I have hold of my opponent and I'm allowed to strike him. I can release and drive in the punch, but as we said earlier, that's a very big movement that's easy to see coming. If I wanna maintain control of my opponent, I hold onto the collar here, open up my hand into that panther claw and drive it in from the side. Will it hurt as much as this long punch or even an elbow? Probably not. Is it still a good way to get that pain compliance allowing me to move around and still strike my opponent? Yes, it is. Now, as I've already said, I have a lot of disdain for the heel palm strike, but that's only if we're replacing the jab and the cross with whatever this is. If, however, we're talking about using something like the chin jab or an open palm heel smash, well then yeah, I think that's great. But the most effective way to strike someone with your hands wide open is by using the first strike your mom ever taught you, the slap. Used correctly, and I think the slap is one of the most effective, underutilized strikes in all of martial arts. Hit something like the cheek or the ear, and you can severely disorient your opponent. Mess up and hit them in the top of the skull or something hard like an elbow, and the risk of hurting yourself is actually very small. Now, as with all open palm strikes, you're trying to hit with the base of the hand, essentially making this the reverse of the wrist strike, where we're using the strong wrist bone to hit our opponent. But I actually like creating concussive force where I force an air bubble in the palm of my hand as I strike across the face of my opponent. It's also important to know I'm trying to come around and bounce off of their cheek to drive through. But you can also push across like this, boss rootin' style. But now it's time to talk about the most popular, most effective alternative hand striking method in all of Karate Jutsu Kun Do. The Tetsui Uchi, or if you prefer, the Hammer Fist. I really do think if you only learn one strike in this video, the Hammer Fist is the one to take away. It's an extremely versatile strike in that you can throw it horizontally, downward, upwards, with the palm up or the palm down. You can hit the head, you can hit the body, you can carry weapons, you can do it on the ground, and of course, you can do it in the clinch range. But for the purpose of this video, if I had to pick one version of the hammer fist to take away, I would say we go with the horizontal hammer fist with either the palm up like this or the palm down in what John Hackleman calls the reverse hook. Putting things back in a combat sports paradigm where we're gloved up and moving around with our opponent, if you're quick enough and sneaky enough with this, you can always use that reverse hook or the upwards hammer fist like this as a substitute for traditional front punching. You'll see guys like Muhammad Ali doing this in their fights after they suffer from big hand injuries. It's not necessarily illegal, but it's close enough to the proper way to throw a punch that most of the time you can get away with it. What I really like about hammer fist striking is that it's a half beat type of strike. You can think about traditional punching as one, two, three, four. Every strike is a full beat. Hammer fist can go in between those beats. So now I can go one, two, three, and four. The same momentum that I use to throw my right hand, I use first with the left and follow with the right. And if I continue my momentum to the left, I come back, I let it carry through, so I'm always following up with a half beat strike. All right, because I like you guys so much, we're gonna do one bonus strike. We're gonna be talking about the Te Katana or hand sword. It's basically hammer fist, but done in a super tight clinch range. The goal is to come from here where I'm holding on my opponent and use the inside of my palm or the outer ridge of my hand to give him a quick strike across the face. It's half of a slap and half of a hammer fist doing more at the same time. The hand sword is a very close range strike that basically skids the body as you try to knock your opponent off balance. And of course, from here, you can push it off, come into a slap, you can go downwards if you're tall enough. The point is, it's a super effective, but very niche kind of strike. So whether you're interested in these kind of strikes for MMA or for self-defense, it's important that you have a strong MMA, kickboxing, boxing base 
that you implement these strikes into. Otherwise, we're just putting the cart behind the horse, in front of the horse, whatever the expression is. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. If you did, please make sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications because apparently if you don't do that, YouTube won't show you my videos. Also, if you're looking to support the channel and pick up some awesome ex martial swag, there's a link down in my description. Save yourself a little bit of money and help the channel grow. Let me know down in the comments which of these was your favorite strike, which one should be taken out, and maybe one that I forgot. As always, I want to thank you guys for the hard work. Thank you for the hard work get to be done, and I'll see you next time.